Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. One meter and 76, I want to make it precise, is my height. I'm very happy about this event. I know from the organizers uh, that their intentions have been the best. Um, but and at the same time, they want to show that only a few freaks in Latvia are eager to change something in the educational system. However, there is quite a significant figure of actively thinking citizens and organizations which want to introduce certain changes in the system, um, probably because they want uh, their children to have better education or probably hoping that other spheres will also undergo good changes because of that. But anyway, there is a sufficient number of people uh, who organize this event, who are present here, as well as who have quite a number of different organizations in the background. And therefore, I want to thank them well. Uh, if I want to exaggerate, then I can say that I am or I have been in the educational system for, for more than 40 years since my kindergarten days and up to this day uh, in different forms and capacities I have been in the educational sphere and my direct relations with the educational sphere are practically from 1990 when I started working in the Adashi secondary school and subsequently in the French Lyceum or uh, and the educational system has never released me really um, from its uh, midst. Um, uh, in the recent time, I have tried to actively get involved in the conversations and discussions about what should be changed in the educational system. In 2010, in early spring, there were intense discussions in the Riga City Council with different specialists and representatives from different sectors, and we discussed the methodologies, forms, and content of education. And why am I telling all this to you? Because in the, those discussions and also subsequently, within a few minutes, we came to a consensus that in the Latvian educational system there should be changes introduced. But what kind of changes? This was quite a problematic issue because the discussion took quite a different turn after we put this question and very difficult to find a common denominator for that, because you can sit next to each other, shoulder to shoulder, but at the same time you will be speaking quite differently. That means you will have a totally different angle of vision because many people may speak with enthusiasm about things which are totally um, uh, controversial sometimes. Should, for instance, children start learning or going to school from six years of age, or probably should there be the same type of school books uh, over the entire s number of schools in Latvia or the entire Latvian educational system, I would say. That means um, we have to find those points or common points upon which we could base our opinion about the necessary changes. That means uh, points from which we could make uh, the next step and all the following steps, because uh, the changes are necessary, but how to find the right direction in order to make the right step. In my presentation, there will be a few slides, which probably some of the colleagues in this audience have already seen, but I think it is worthwhile to repeat them or to repeat the these statements or mm, premises, because I think that uh, these are quite worth considering. 
One of the things is that my daughter, who is four years of age, I think she will probably live until 2100, which means that she will go through the educational system, she will go to the elementary school and start her education. But we know that uh, it should be, uh, the educational system should be focused in such a way that things which we teach to children in the first or second decade of uh, this century will be good and useful also in the sixth or seventh decade of the same century, which means that we have to think about the content of education. We have to remember that uh, we have to face the challenge challenge of time and uh, focusing on it, we have to do things responsibly, choosing the content of education. The second thing, from the point of view of the community, where do we place school in the value chain of our community? Will it be civic uh, skills, uh, skills of living together in a community, or um, skills of uh, being active and being be able to communicate with representatives of other cultures, other ethnic groups, or other countries, uh, the opportunity or even the skill to be changing or to adapt to changes uh, in a very short time, which means that school probably is or has a certain role in creating this value change, because if we we find answers to these questions, we will probably be able to move forward. And what schools can do is to try to stimulate or promote the formation of creative talents in children, in the young ones, and to teach children to look at things differently depending on time and the particular case or particular situation. That means that we have to develop generic skills at school. And this could uh, give us an answer to how long we will live and what kind of values we will live with and what will be the place or role of school in this value. The next thing will not be poetic things, but things which I, as a minister, um, an inc incumbent minister, and uh, having been in this post and position for four months already, have um, singled out or identified for myself. I know that um, discussions on reforms are very difficult to carry out if we don't come to terms about specific facts or specific premises. For instance, how to best organize the financing of the educational systems or what should be the professional role, the image and the opportunities for the career of teachers and what should be the content of education. These discussions become very cumbersome if we don't have a certain consensus about certain facts. And today, I want to share with you some of opinions or some of the ideas which I find useful. Uh, certainly, I have offered these facts or these graphs or these figures to organizations of heads of schools or municipal association or employers and different other uh, interested parties, uh, which probably could and should be involved uh, in order to, that we could carry out these discussions fruitfully. And, uh, 
I will deal with some of these things in my presentation today. Uh, you can put the following questions to people. Do you think that in the current comprehensive educational system uh, there are um, or there should be certain changes ca carried out? And then 33% say, yes, certainly. I know that educational institutions in Latvia also have a positive attitude towards changes. So the general opinion is yes, changes are needed and are necessary. There have been discussions on different topics. Probably you already know some of these points, but I will linger upon some of these slides for some time. In each of these, uh, uh, we'll try to carry out certain changes. For instance, the dynamic of the number of teachers and pupils in general education. This red curve is the um, number of teachers in Latvia. I call them pedagogues, not exactly teachers. That means a broader range of people involved in education. Then uh, the blue line is um, number of pupils, and uh, the green one is uh, the number of vacancies or positions or general number of uh, those uh, teaching loads in education, which, for instance, require a teacher per a certain number of pupils. Certainly, uh, there can, can be a different story about each of this curve. More and more problems will emerge concerning the following. What will the existing number of teachers do when the number of pupils is declining from, declining from year to year? We have to find answers for this question. I think that already this spring at the ministry, we will try to find a new offer for the motivational system for the teachers, but we have to proceed from the need and necessity to reorganize or refocus the uh, uh, they probably or shift the weight from the uh, uh, number of teachers uh, uh, if we follow this trend of ever diminishing number of pupils and we will have to reconsider certainly also the salaries of teachers in view of this because we have to offer a plan for reforms also in the financial system, because without the financial reform in this sector, we will find it very difficult to carry on the discussion of the issue. This is a reality we have to face. Now, who are those who participate in education? These are about 200,000 um, youngsters uh, who, and we see uh, the numbers uh, of uh, pupils who are registered in the educational system. The red part is those who are not registered in the general education system, and the blue one is those who are registered as uh, um, school children. So, and the age cohort is from 7 to 15, that is uh, the first to the ninth form at school. As you see, according to uh, the, these figures, uh, 7,674 have left this country. These are recent statistics. About 3,595, we have no information. Uh, that means uh, uh, where they are, um, somehow there is no clear. 
opinion and the core uh, 762 do not have their declared permanent state place of residence and 45 are uh, have been reported as missing so it means that we cannot trace them currently whether they have left the country with their parents or elsewhere sometimes the parents simply do not inform uh, the uh, relevant authorities about about leaving the country, but sometimes the parents certainly who leave the country, they uh, continue with their children's education in another country. This will be a future problem as well, because 7% of the Latvian children are not found in Latvian schools. This should be resolved or answered. Uh, uh, at least we have to see which part of them we can involve in, the value, in education. The third topic, which is very uh, topical again, this, uh, we have been discussing the voucher system possibility during the last month, because in different places of Latvia we have difference in uh, financing, municipal and state financing in schools. We don't uh, take account interest education, sports schools, art schools, music schools, money here, because this money also goes into educational system. But this is what uh, comes out of the state and municipal resources. And we don't include investment money in this calculation, but you see the picture. Uh, on average, in Latvia, if we put together the public or state and municipal financing into the day school, we have 1,367 lats per pupil. If you want to turn it during one day into the voucher system, you will have one voucher for, for 400 and something lads. Of course, if you add art and music schools, the amount will be a bit larger. In Liepai, it's 900. 64, and in Zemgale region, we have 1,734 uh, lads, which means that the differences in funding may be double. They, uh, in, uh, there will be tw uh, twice the, uh, the amount in one region and two times smaller amount in another region. The municipal uh, funding is 444 uh, on average uh, per pupil. The smallest amount is in Liepaja, it's the city on the east coast of uh, Latvia, the Baltic Sea, and in uh, Vidzeme we will have more funding and uh, the richer municipalities of course have more money for their uh, school children. Another question, whether this uh, gives equal opportunities for every child in Latvia, irrespective of where the child is born, of course the answer is not. And we should be solving these problems, and we can't leave the diminishing number of uh, children without equal funding. Now the next question is how many schools uh, do we have today uh, which are so small that they will, uh, will have a risk of not performing? Of course, uh, this is uh, based on the today's uh, financing. Uh, from the state and the municipalities. In general, we talk about elementary schools in regions. The minimal number of pupils will be 53. This is, this is the threshold under which uh, the performance of the school is uh, impossible because it will not be po possible to carry out the curriculum uh, well. 
Of course, uh, the numbers depend on the type of school, whether it's elementary or com comprehensive school. In general, we have 170 schools, or 15 or 16 percent of all the number of all the schools in Latvia, which are uh, having the risk of not being able to perform. These are the so-called small schools, and I would like to draw this landscape so that you feel what is uh, what is the situation, because these uh, schools are under threat. Uh, at, under the existing educational system, the situation can, can cannot continue without change. My suggestion is special administrative programs, but I will not be dealing in detail about that. I can answer your questions in the discussion later. Now, this is the data about the workload for children. These are Friday's data. The data uh, from the hot uh, pan or hot cattle. Uh, I would like to metaphorically say this is the serve. It is based on the survey uh, of parents, where they answered uh, the questions about the time their children spend in doing their homework. Uh, the specialized um, uh, instruction is taken out, and also the art and music schools load is taken out. Maybe this is uh, uh, the explanation why these uh, numbers differ from what I mentioned earlier when I said 53 hours. This is only the schoolwork and homework which has been counted here, and this is alarming for these age cohorts, especially for small children when they have to spend 47, 49 hours per week, which is equal to uh, official uh, number of working hours of adults. This is a huge workload, I would like to say. And whatever it looks like, it makes us think and makes us worry how children can perform. Now, this is something which we already discussed several years, several weeks, sorry, ago. This is about the time period and number of weeks during the school year, how long the school year should last. Uh, in the East Asia, we have 260 days per year. We have 175, which is approximately similar, uh, the same as the US and Canada data. And uh, Canada is one, one of the uh, which has been also assessed in our partner uh, countries. The school uh, year is longer by three or four weeks even. And if we combine this data with the previous slide, uh, we have to consider whether we are satisfied with such load and the number of uh, days in school year, or should we pr prolong the schooling year, or should we do something with the content of classes? But as soon as we start discussing content of education, then the teachers uh, are er very uh, free and they do without much difficulty when they have to uh, throw out something out of the content of their colleague teachers subjects but uh, they are reluctant to throw anything out of their subjects and uh, we, we still have to consider the additional uh, uh, topics. This is health care, uh, uh, teaching, and also the uh, religious issues which one 
to be taught. So we have to take into account such additions as well. And I would like to say that we will not be able to continue as that, and we will have to take decisions what to do. Now, this is the number of working hours or the workload of teachers per week. We had a flash uh, survey on, on the internet uh, page and the, the five, 55 hours per week are divided into three, 38 hours uh, direct work with, t with pupils and the homework correction 12 percent and preparation for classes is 15 15 percent and this workload is quite large uh, 55 hours is a bit too much to organize um, uh, the pay and workload efficiently. Of course, uh, there, there is a lot of uh, work on part of the teachers as pupils, and we will have to expect good results. But in the tests which have been carried out and uh, which are comparable to the level of other countries, these are PISA levels and Latvia is green. The blue goes for Estonia and the orange goes for Finland. And we see that we that our future perspective is to catch up with the Finnish results, which are on the fourth and the fifth and the sixth level, uh, show very high percentage, very good results, and we are lagging behind in all our indicators. Of course, there are some uh, improvements, but they are not stable improvement, and we are much better on the first and the second level, where we are the best. And people even can learn from us in other countries on these levels. Now the competence in math, in math. fundamentally nothing changes. Uh, the competence in mathematics shows that on the fourth, fifth and fi sixth level we still have a bit uh, more than f the fifth part of our pupils. Uh, which perform best, and on the third and the second and uh, second level, very more than a half. And you see, this is the province level from 2009. Of course, we will have newer, newer data soon. Now the sciences. Look at these levels. The math, 20 percent. Sciences, very little, very different, very problematic. Not brilliant. But these are international compatible indicators. Let's see the internal indicators. And this is an attempt to uh, summarize this teach the pupils' performance in maths in, in the thir third, sixth, and ninth grade. Uh, grade eight, eight, uh, eight points is a very good uh, mark. Four is the last uh, good so-called uh, medium mark, and under four it's, it's almost failure. And now we see the percentages, and we see that in the ninth grade, the mathematics, uh, we have 15 percent of all pupils who uh, receive eight or more and in the third grade, it's almost 45 percent. And the same goes for the 2010 and 2011 is included because we have the discussion that the exams were too difficult. And then the uh, mark under four, uh, the number of people receiving th these marks have increased. And of course, as the minister, I have to take uh, to, uh, to uh, say that these are not the best indicators, and I can't boast about them.
Well, I can think of something because I have gone through all sorts of schooling, but I cannot understand how uh, to uh, do this, improve this system. Sometimes I have to come to the conclusion that people overwork. Uh, that means uh, teachers overwork and students overwork or pupil students overwork and the teachers uh, are not remunerated adequately because we have now a classical sub-optimal system. Everybody works, everybody works much, everybody works hard, they overwork and they there are no changes, there is no improvement. Therefore, we need to do or to think of some reform. What are other motivators or stimulators for changes? Certainly, it is not simply the reduced number of children. The question is where they are located, where they live. Because in the future, certainly, uh, there will be no need for such a number of schools because the number of uh, population in those locations will go down and down. <clears throat> Certainly, we have to think also of the fact that we will not have finances coming to us or descending uh, upon us from the blue. Uh, and even if there are no financial cataclysms in the near future, still we will have to think about very modest um, growth in the availability of financial resources. And we will have to reckon with the uh, fact. At the same time, we will have to think about those skills and this uh, knowledge that will have to be acquired by our pupils, which were not necessary earlier or which we were not even aware of earlier. And at the same time, we have to reckon with the achievements in the same spheres and sectors elsewhere. Our children have to be competitive and as knowledgeable as anybody else in the world. And certainly, we have to reckon with the fact that um, great changes are taking place even in the traditional sectors or segments of our economy. Uh, where are we going and what are the things which we have to take into consideration? First of all, we have to take into consideration what we have uh, on the left side on the slide and at the same time we have to consider also certain things probably which we have to drop um, because they are, will not be effective. I wonder if we can sustain uh, such uh, approaches which are not effective. And I wonder if um, the skill to write correctly or to speak correctly will remain the most important thing which we have to achieve in the process of education. Uh, we, I wonder if we should um, sanction errors, mistakes, or a wish to avoid changes. I think these things should be gradually um, eliminated. At the same time, if we think about competitiveness, people should be able to establish their own philosophy of life, learn to plan their life, to introduce innovations, to set or settle, set priorities, etc., etc. These skills have to be uh, acquired. I will now move over to certain metaphors within the range of which we can imagine or visualize the teaching pro process. Certainly, we have to think about creativity, communicativity, uh, a courage to experiment, courage to be motivated and to uh, accept innovations. But we have to probably, uh, we, should we encourage 
encourage people to even make mistakes. Uh, probably even permitting probably a, a youngster to face the consequences of such mistakes. For instance, if you let a child fall and learn through this falling how to keep his balance or what to avoid in order not to uh, repeat this kind of experience, etc. In this way, probably we can teach responsibility or uh, the skill or capacity to take responsibilities. This probably involves uh, psychological changes both in the thinking of parents and in children themselves, which means that uh, whether the teacher will be ready to let a child experiment, but at the same time you have to have the acceptance of these kind of approaches by parents, because parents may say that when I was at school these things were not encouraged, mm, but I think that we should try to use this broad approach by teachers, but at the same time, probably the teachers ask one type of school book, one type of methodology, one type of approach, because uh, remember uh, the film, The Sound of Music, there were seven children in the um, family of that particular colonel or uh, whoever he was, who was trying to to educate his children by using the system of military whistles. Uh, I think I have exceeded my time. I'm sorry. Uh, certainly, um, probably you can imagine a plant, a production plant, where all the processes are autom automatic and the uh, uh, probably all the process proceeds by robot uh, technologies, but uh, the school should be a place probably like a garden where a teacher acts like a gardener finding or trying to find for each plant, meaning each child, the best approach for the development of that particular child's talents or skills. Probably one child needs a lot of sun, the other probably needs probably some uh, to be placed in a shade. That means um, there should be different approaches, differentiated approaches, and not a uniform general approach to everybody. That means that each child has to be, um, for each child that has to be found his own way, probably his own tempo or pace in the educational process. Certainly you can give a child some ready thing or a practical thing and try to conduct the teaching process by um, the same methods as coaching in sports, for instance, probably using even a whistle or um, using commands. Uh, but uh, that means you may well tell the pupil, now you run, now you stop, now you bend down, now you straighten up. I think school should be probably like uh, an arts shop. Uh, that means that you can come to school at 11 or at 2 o'clock, but you have your own individual pace and approach. For instance, one child may engage in painting, the other in model modeling, and children will be motivated to do what they really enjoy doing and learn by uh, this kind of method. Certainly it is very challenging, very challenging, challenging indeed. It will not be able to accomplish by simple approach, by unified approach. When uh, probably a parent says uh, that, uh, why aren't you not at school? Uh, and the child says, it is not my time, I have a different schedule. But uh, school should not be 
like army. You should not uh, wake up in the morning by bugle call and be roll called and listen simply to commands and obey the commands. Uh, this should not be so. And you should not be also a fully automated process of a production plant. It should be an individual approach, like a garden or garden or tending each plant differently. That means in all these uh, diverse approaches, we have to find uh, something which would be optimum. In this case, I want to simply state the situation as it is, and so there should be certainly questions. Certainly, uh, there should be the so-called um, author's programs in education. Uh, this is a distribution or spread by how many educational uh, establishments or institutions work according to ministry programs, according to authors programs, and how many teachers use uh, the, the so-called pilot programs or um, special model programs in their subjects. We see 97% uh, even uh, are using just these def uh, already worked out uh, model or module programs. And, uh, uh, only 3% of the teachers use these author's programs. And my last slide, I'm sorry for having exceeded my time. I do apologize. These are skills of the 21st century. Teachers themselves uh, should assess or evaluate what skills by the teachers have to be um, uh, manifest during the teaching process. Here we see how to assess the um, skills of the teachers, uh, um, demonstrating the achievements in a particular uh, uh, study process or a particular subject. And this is also done by peer assessment. For instance, it's a skill to um, sh demonstrate how individual approach to children, school children, is used. But we see that uh, the skill to establish uh, cross-subject links is the least expressed, only 9.6 percent. The skill to, for self-assessment also only 18 percent. And uh, for instance, a skill to organize uh, school children's cooperation among themselves, only 17 percent. Um, this shows how the professional actions or activities of teachers manifest itself different, in different aspects during their teaching work in class. My question is a very specific one. This is about those figures where you see this, uh, the uh, achievements of uh, pupils in mathematics. Remember, when I looked at those percentages which you indicated there, um, it, I got the impression that uh, in Form 9, half of the pupils had the mark below grade 4 or point 4. Does it mean that all of them are um, failures in, the, in mathematics? if it is, uh, their achievements are graded less than four points. Yes, evidently this kind of slide. No, not exactly. Mm -hmm. Mathematics. Uh, uh, the figures uh, underneath, yes. 14 percent, 
below four points. Oh, evidently, I didn't quite clearly uh, see the percentage. Only it's uh, it's not 50 percent. It's uh, seven or 14 percent where the achievement in mathematics is graded below four. Uh, uh, secondary school number three in Riga, headmaster. I wanted to ask uh, you to return to the slide where you compared the length of the study year. I wonder if it is correct to compare with other countries in the same way, because we have to know what we compare, because if we compare uh, the length of uh, studies, then you have to take uh, some, uh, some uh, that means some, uh, some uh, probably milestone, because probably if you study um, 165 days, uh, that probably the difference is because in England they have only five lessons a day, but with us probably it's ten lessons a day, so the number of days will be totally irrelevant for comparison. We used this comparison in comparison, uh, we compared w with, with the data which were available. You know, in such comparisons, uh, which we have in other slides, uh, according to the subjects, and there is a number of lessons uh, in per week in different age groups or different class uh, grades are indicated. These are aggregate data or figures which uh, do not indicate how many hours per day or how many lessons future children have per day, only number of days per study year. Certainly, we have to make a distinction and look deeper into this, and then we have to take a different benchmark, certainly. Uh, but this data is not taken from Eurydice, just uh, to be pretty. Uh, uh, just for comment, uh, I had a small discussion with the Estonian is educational minister a couple of months ago before Christmas. We discussed the length of the school year, and he mentioned that. Uh, in the air ministry, they are convinced that their programs, which have uh, also been designed for 35 weeks, uh, are not to be uh, physically, uh, is not able to be implemented during th 35 weeks because a pupil uh, fall ill or something else happens and uh, they uh, actually take uh, 37 weeks to be implemented so that uh, taken into, into consideration consideration this situation, the school year should be extended by two weeks at least. They are not courageous enough to do it. They are waiting for us to do it first, and then they will be quietly following our path. Because they are worried to take uh, to get their teachers uh, demonstrating into the streets. Uh, in any way, their teachers still demonstrate. But, but fact, in in fact, they have 37 week uh, program curriculum which is pressed into 35 weeks. And actually, the curriculum demands more in terms of weeks and days. And the situation and the feeling is uh, the same with our neighbors as well. Now we are competing for the mic with Robert. Uh, the uh, question proves uh, to the fact that inside the sector we don't have a um, consensus of the fa on the facts. Maybe this is not a good comment about the facts, but maybe internally we need to decide upon the date when we uh, when we actually uh, take the data, and otherwise it's uh, impossible to uh, be precise. Mr. Sauerberg, if you, by listening, can uh, remember what we have been discussing here and during your discussion, uh, make a comment on what we are discussing, because I know that your uh, discussion is uh, your presentation is about similar issues. My name is Martin Martinson, and I have three uh, children, and I just uh, 
came here by accident. I have also four, three children and not here, but I'm not here by accident, said Mr. Craig Davis. I work uh, with teachers, and I have a question whether you have indicated a group which has may, uh, given a task to be to formulate the ideal school which we would like to put as our goal. We are talking about the curriculums, about the workloads, but what is our goal in general? Because we are dividing something, we are uh, being so very um, unfocused. I want to see this ideal school, whether you have the vision of an ideal school. Yes, we have a workforce, a task force within the ministry who works on the curriculum of the general education, com comprehensive education. and two people of this group or even three or more are present today at this discussion and their task is to formulate such uh, offer which will be maybe not the ideal offer but optimum offer uh, for the curriculum for the uh, methodology for the content of the teaching. The deadline is March, maybe this is not possible to be done in March, but the, uh, uh, but we need a month or a month and a half, and then the, uh, this offer will be uh, presented. Uh, different servers among uh, pupils and their parents uh, have been made and they are avail made available publicly. The results are uh, public. In Valmir last year, in March, uh, the, uh, it, uh, the citizens described the elements of the ideal school. But in the ministry, we have officially formed a small task force which met even yesterday they met they meet regularly and then you'll be able to criticize the first version of the ideal school i would like to comment that when uh, when uh, I, i'm working with innovations and when people are asked uh, what is what are their opinion they present the what they know not something new because they tend to present what they know who are in the group please raise your hands in the group people from the group so maybe people from the uh, people in the conference can approach you during the breaks and during the lunch break uh, Mikhail Silans is the next, next uh, putting the next question if I understand correctly this program uh, for the future will be developed by teachers mainly by teachers and I didn't uh, notice in the presentation by Mr. Minister uh, data or many data about uh, today's situation of, uh, with teachers. In, with regard of their professional, vocational development, I would like to know what is the statistics available, how many hours, how many conferences they attend. Maybe you have some data about the qualification of teachers increasing of their vocational development, their professional development. If you turn around for 180 degrees, you have Evia Papule, Mrs. Evia Papule, who will tell you about this, and maybe she will be able to do it uh, publicly because she has a project on the uh, continuous education of teachers. Uh, she has data about thousands of teachers, uh, what they have learned, what uh, what has been their professional ed education, in which uh, e spheres, and maybe Evi, you can tell us about the, where the information is available publicly about these issues, because there are specific data. Another matter I would like to say is in the, this week's discussion in the Ministry of Education, the colleagues following the numbers of students graduating from the 
uh, higher educational establishments in pedagogy, in teacher training, and uh, compared to the data of how many of them come uh, eventually to school to teach, the data is shocking because uh, of out of 1,000 graduates, only seven young teachers start teaching on the 1st of September at schools. Of course, there are uh, students who have been starting uh, their work as teachers while they are studying at the universities, but when people graduate the universities and go to schools, only seven last year uh, against uh, thousands or hundreds who graduate. This is something we should consider. This is shocking. We have to consider it. We will look into it in detail. Actually, we spend huge resources and really pay for these resources, no matter how. But the results are shocking. And maybe the minister is not the right person who should uh, uh, yell about it. The press can discuss it. These are not validated data yet, but this is something which makes us alert. We have to be concerned, and we have to look at the graduate numbers and then the numbers enrolled in school as teachers. Mr. Ivers Adamson from, uh, re from uh, Kuotani region in Latvia. I'm uh, concerned uh, about your slide showing the workload of pupils. It is very important to specifically, precisely prov provide this information publicly because the parents should uh, read about correct data. 20 uh, hours for uh, for elementary schools, then they have the extended time at school, um, in additional uh, education or edu 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 additional care at schools. If they, uh, if they spend their time at school, then they learn there and they don't need to uh, do their homework at uh, home anymore. This, uh, this is the time when children stay at school school with teachers after the classes are over, and then they don't spend all 20 hours just learning. They also go out and play. Uh, if we provide such data to the public, we have to make it very precise. We, I, well, when I calculated, I uh, came up with 33 hours. Of course, this is an internal issue of our sector. We have to work in, on it in Internally. And now the last question. Uh, we still have two questions and then we'll have to finish. Uh, can I ask a question? Mrs. Yana Simonovska, I also have three children. I represent NGO Parents for Education. Thank you very much uh, to Mr. Minister for his presentation because he provided us with a great survey of the sector. I have a question. Uh, according to the results of PISA, uh, the Latvian result uh, improved in the first level, but then the fifth and the sixth level, this, uh, the results are uh, discouraging. They uh, decline uh, in the uh, all the grades. And have you made any results, any analysis why this equalization happens, why the best pupils' results uh, decrease? Uh, I assume, but I don't know for, for sure. Maybe Miss, uh, Mr. Kangro can. Uh, uh, talk about it in more detail because the analysis has been performed and uh, the research has been done on what is going on and when we showed this picture to the teachers when they had this eight uh, grade eight and so and then the, there was an adjustment in they said that in 2010 the tests were very difficult and this is why the uh, grades decreased, but then we added uh, 2011 and we decided that maybe the test uh, was not the right reason. There is something else happening. 
Of course, we have to understand whether this is a peculiarity of one year or this is a systematic process, and then we have to find out the, re the reason. When we discussed ratings and other indicators, and when we showed that the excellence, the uh, indicator of excellence decreased, especially in sciences, and this was alarming, alarming uh, that the excellence is decreasing, uh, or it's these indicators decrease. We have to start working on collecting the competence in the sector and in the ministry, and then we will have the diagnosis. Maybe the academicians already have done that, and we have to ask to Mr. Kangrel. The statistics is data, but we have to show to see the trend. This is important. Mr. Kangrel, uh, University of Latvia, reacting to what has just been said, this has been uh, this research has been planned. Uh, this is this has been an order from the ministry that we have to consider uh, the excellence and uh, of course these measurements are precise and correct we uh, the research uh, we haven't really done the research uh, completely yet but our teachers and our master students uh, tell us that uh, the great energy which is put uh, effort which has been put into the ninth grade because PISA considers the ninth grade, and uh, everybody is, uh, all the energy goes into the uh, teaching the, uh, the people, uh, the pupils, so that they graduate from the ninth grade, that everybody has the basic education, and maybe we haven't paid uh, enough attention to the best pupils. And if we uh, pay attention to every flower, so, so that every flower flourishes and blooms, then it's very, uh, very expensive. Expensive. I'm against uh, the, uh, the data, uh, publicizing the data which, uh, which, uh, about the seven uh, graduates starting to uh, work at schools. We shouldn't publicize yet because we have to check it. Of course, we have to uh, consider uh, the situation at uh, universities, people, uh, students at the universities already work as teachers. And as I be, have been told, the calculation will only be done now. It should have been done long ago. Education uh, in the uh, higher education establishment is also uh, is undergoing change, and the, many, uh, the law will be designed only for the educational, higher educational establishments. It will be soon, but it has to be, uh, it had to be done uh, earlier. Of course, the ministry uh, can uh, uh, provide us with a database uh, on teachers, and we can uh, co somehow compare it with our database of students. And also, there has been a employ uh, market research by the Ministry of Welfare, and the self-employment by teachers was really high, and the next uh, self-employment or employment by doctors was the next indicator. So 70, 80 percent on average, uh, those who have graduated from vocational uh, teach, uh, teaching uh, vocational programs at the universities already work as teachers. We shouldn't publicize such data just mentioned and officially by minister. Actually, sorry, uh, we have to limit your intervention because we have pressures of time. We are a little bit short of time. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I see that if two experts uh, uh, fight each other or at least dispute uh, uh, the issue, this is an internal question of the sector, and you have to come to terms just 
among yourselves or between yourselves. And the last question in this mm, uh, session, please. You were for the first. So probably you put both questions, one and the other, and then we'll conclude this session. I'm from Yurmala. I have only one question. We all understand that changes are necessary. Uh, has the ministry thought about the following, that uh, there will be some help or assistance given to us in order to carry out reforms in education? And now your question, probably the answer should be joint. I am from England, former headmaster of uh, school. Uh, when you carry out changes, uh, you have to see what is the aim of educational system, and then we would understand why we are here today and what we want to do. But today I haven't heard what is this goal or aim, mm, uh, for instance, uh, to promote the skills of children, uh, their responsibility towards community or so. Where do we see this community? Where do we see the future of the state? These are the final questions in this session, but we will have a lot of questions and answers throughout the day. As you understand, the aim uh, is probably to have a certain consensus uh, about this aim, I have always emphasized on my part that uh, the we should at least on one A4 page put down the aim of the educational system of Latvia to formulate it, which means if we have such formulation and the consensus about it, then I as a minister can even impose it or force its implementation. And in my view, it is to promote the development of each child's talents and that we should have a school in Latvia which um, uh, is of the world level. That means recognized, accepted, and acceptable on the level of world education today. Sometimes, certainly, we get very much perplexed because we do not know how to achieve it. But probably as of the 1st of September this year, we should find several probably scores of schools in Latvia who could join in partnership in order to do something differently. It should be part of creative partnership schools. Probably we could borrow even some elements from the UK. And we should probably try to implement this partnership principle to stimulate creativity in all the subjects at school so that school management and community and the teachers and everybody involved should be aware of this, should support this, and there should be a group of experts or supporters to whom you could turn at any time of night or day and ask for assistance with methodology, with advice, with coaching. This could be our model, which we could suggest. That means that these schools could be implementing teaching, which would be different from the standard probably used all over Latvia today, and that there should be consensus among the parents and teachers and school management, and we could probably find certain financing of such a project or pilot project. And it would be good if these schools would be several scores of schools, let us say, uh, all over Latvia, probably more or less equally distributed over the entire territory of the Republic. And we, as the ministry, could really support this kind of um, uh, process. 
uh, we would be very happy to have this process running with uh, starting already with the next study year as of the 1st of September. Let us first thank the minister for his presentation and for his answers.